Proper store is supposed to start at the beginning. Ain't so simple with this one. Now here's a kid whose whole world got all twisted, leaving him stranded on a rock in the sky. He gets up, sets off for the bastion, where everyone agreed to go in case of trouble. Ground forms up under his feet as it point in the way. He don't stop to wonder why. Finds his lifelong friend just lying in the road. Well, it's a touching reunion. He sees what's left of the rippling walls, years of work undone in an instant, in the calamity. That a survivor. No, ma'am. It's a gas fella, forced out from underground. Kid pops him good. Starts to feel his bruises, though. An old repeater falls out of the sky. Ain't a gift from the gods, but it'll have to do. Got a holder still to spin up the chamber. Kid's worked up quite a thirst by now, so that fountain looks real inviting. Sometimes you just need a drink. A school of squirts tunnels up around them. Must have fled here from the mines. He sets foot inside one of Selandia's famous watering holes. Inside's old Rondi, the bartender. The calamity got him for his drinking did. Then Kid finds his trusty shield. But just as he's getting a handle on it, the security takes him for a petty thief. Special delivery. Gas hose. Windbags start turning up for last call. start coming out of the woodwork. A big old fella pops out in front of the kid. Kid sees the weight of the bastion out the window. It's a bit of a drop. Rondi always wanted his ashes scattered here. He gets a good look at things on his way down. He lands on top of a breaker's bow and it ain't broke. Kid spies a good perch for some target practice. He knows he should draw the string all the way back. Good news is the emergency defenses still work. 
bad news is they're aiming for the kid. Picks up a few pointers from a dusty old tome. Find the distillery, right next to the arsenal. Tough part of town. The arsenal's where the kid can pick the best tools for the job. One sip of the spirits in that distillery, and the kid'll feel like a new man. It's a memento from the breaker, once the fastest man in the land. Birthing like crazy in a couple of corn bins. He's a mighty fast learner. Sends the kid on his way. The bastion's real close now. a chunk of alloy. The smell of barley and spoiled blueberries fills the air. Scumbags. Kid maybe shouldn't have done what he just did.
shit puts him out of his misery. City's heart. Might as well. Kid hasn't feel any better get a move on. The place is starting to fall. See that core kid took was the only thing making this particular rock stay afloat. Kid just keeps running. to go. Now the kid sees something stranger still. His mind races. Did anybody else survive? Sure enough, he finds another. He finds me. We talk for a spell. There's a bit of the Bastion's power in that crest, enough to point the way to the cores. All I tell him is to set that core of his on the monument there, then watch. And just like that, the Bastion comes alive. Starts growing again grown stronger. Kids gotta put its power to good use. Now the Bastion can send them even farther into the wild unknown. Kid ponders what to build. The Bastion's a place of peace, but we can hold our own if we have to. Much kid can handle with hammer and bow in hand. Kid don't know what's out there waiting for him. The Skyway. Now the kid can ride the wind to distant lands. Now he lands at the intersection between bad and wrong. Ought to be a core down one of these twisted streets. But which one? He heads for the squirt steps. Won't be no field trip this time. He's come back and digest just about anything. Except for this. It's quick for slicing and light enough to throw. They say even the most rambunctious squirts can be tamed. No sign of the core here. At least the kid got something for his trouble. Them squirts just don't know when to quit. He 
heads for the biggest dump in town. Scumbag Alley. Some scumbag still feeding off the city's own trash. Keeps telling himself he better watch his step. And then there he is. The oldest scumbag of them all. Gershel. Disposition. They always said old Gersel wouldn't go without a fight. The rest of the path is gone for good, and his city crest won't bring it back. Surprise. Like the gas fellas are hiding it from him. He heads for the east side, where windbags used to keep the local forge. Inside the forge, Key can fine-tune those instruments of his. Core ain't here neither, so he's got to guess again. where the gas fella foreman used to live, tending to his flock. No white gas fellas all dress alike. Kids wondering the same thing. Locked down tight in an alloy cage. A blustery old foreman is keeping his fellas in check, almost like he's showboating for the crowd. Kid's ready to go, and his ticket out's right where he started. He comes back, just like I knew he would. The core hums in his pack, the monument's calling for it.
The windbags used to be all right. Then the calamity took the floor out from under him. Ain't always much to say. A bow and a machete, every bit as effective as the fancier stuff. Kid does it again. Only fair he decides what we build next. A lot of things need fixing up in this world, and we can start right here. The little Zolwood oil and that blade shines like a light. Good length of me scut, that bow's like new again. Picked up traces of other cores while the kid was out. The melting pot, place hoarded all sorts of fineries from beyond the boundless sea. The sundown path, lovely place for a stroll, before the calamity that is. The breaker barracks. Many straight shooters learn their way here. The breakers used to come here for target practice. Used to play a little game. See who could bust the most targets in the fewest shots. He's focused. He's armed. And he's off. Shot just happens in a flash. It ain't done bad at all. Kid ain't had enough of the breaker's barracks. Takes practice, and a mighty strong bow helps too.
He returns with some of the materials we need. In better days, the melting pot was sealed tighter than the skin on the squirt. Of all the plans to survive the calamity, it had to be stab weeds. Blasted things hurt like a broken heart. If there's a core, he figures it ought to be deeper down. Core stuck inside one of those fancy cages. Some of the stuff lying around is downright dangerous. No breaking a cage like that, but the kid tries anyway. Gotta find a way to spring it open. He throws a switch. Now what could possibly go wrong? Quite a bit, as it turns out. The cage starts lifting from the core ever so slow. All kid can do is wait. Shipments start falling in. Not every squirt's born bad. Some spring to the kid's defense. Judging by the movement of the cage, it's gonna take a little while. Don't take kindly to interlopers. Even some gas fellas take his corner. Birdie pop that mean old fork. At this rate, maybe five more minutes, maybe thirty, hard to tell. Squirts get real territorial around the core. Then a ship and a free sample shows up. It ain't all bad, as the kid finds some spices from the other land, tax free. One thing's for sure, that cage is awful heavy. Troublesome scene to be sure.
moments left, and the core goes free. Ten, nine, eight, seven. We give or take a few seconds. Finally, the core's within reach. And done. He's got it. Just gotta get to the nearest barge. I still remember the look on his face after that one. The old world's finished, but the new world's just getting started. The bastion ain't gonna build itself. Well, not entirely. Makes time to sample spirits from my personal supply. Dread rums brewed from swamp weeds. So its effect is as bold as its flavor. Windbag Ranch was built for gathering squirt extract and copious supply. Ain't nothing more healthful. Some folks showed up to make a fast buck with nothing but a knife. Still others use the place to test their finest blades.
Place gets awful slick sometimes. Cute cuts all of them down soon enough. Kid comes back from Windbag Ranch, smelling good and ripe. Always time for juice and squirts, they used to say. Fellas can't feel the thing. Some squirts tried to flee on instinct. Folks voyaged across the boundless sea to found Ceylandia. It was good living here for a while. War machetes are so quick, you gotta keep a good grip on them. used to walk the sundown path. Kid ain't here for pleasure though. But then, somebody gets to the core before the kid. The floor starts giving way under the lightest step. A single panic squirt could bring the whole place down. Fragments of the old world rain sky. Well, the path ain't exactly open to visitors no more. Security is all fired up. See, the path was intended for leisurely strolling and such. Position. But calamity changed everything, even where the wind blows. Well, if we manage. 
master the winds in the old days, we can do it again. But the question is... Who else could have taken the core? Well, ain't no survivor stole the thing. Scumbag ate it by mistake. Tough break. Unlike the kid, that core ain't coming back. I know they used to ship live munitions down the path. Find time to find them. He's wires to toss those things plenty far away. Gas fellas need some shut eye from time to time. They get real cranky. In all this toil, Kid keeps coming back to an overwhelming question Who else could have survived the calamity? So he didn't find the core that time, but that ain't about to stop us. Sometimes a single look says it all. The hanging gardens. Folks used to go here to relax from their relaxing. The Bastion, Ceylandia's safe haven, once the highest point in the city. Too bad it wasn't finished before the calamity struck. The dead welcome him with open arms. The calamity took everybody after all. It sees a plain, frozen faces all around. These folks never saw the calamity coming, but someone did. Someone close. Kid sees him there agape, in the flesh. Hits a snag or two trying to get to him. He ain't about to stop, no matter what. He's got so many questions after all. Just ain't got time for answers. The Tunder brothers didn't make it. They never saw what it was like beyond the walls. Nor did the bird boy didn't make it. The Jawsons, they didn't make it. Grady Senior, Grady Junior, they didn't make it. But him, 
He survived. Kid finds proof enough that man ain't from around here. Just think, without that man, we wouldn't be here right now, would we? The core survived as well. What do you say to a man who's seen too much? Kid hasn't a clue, but he says this. We have to go. Please. He's a proper gentleman, that man. His name is Zolf. No hiding, he's an Ura. Folks like him ain't never been a common sight in Ceylandia. He's relieved to see a living face or two. The kid and I introduce ourselves in kind. Both to him and to each other for the first time. For Zolf, Ceylandia was like a second home. He's real worried about his first home too, far to the east. He was born in the Tazel Terminals. The Ura sent him on a mission of peace to our city, and he's lived here ever since. We fought the Ura decades ago, but that was then. Things are different between us now. Kid says hello, but Zolf's lost in thought. The Corps. They remember. That's why this place is coming together. That's why things are gonna be all right. Well, look what we have here. The lost and found. Here, kid takes fragments of the old world and makes them whole again. <laughs> 